Hey there! Today we'll have a look at a pen model that I have reviewed before, but this is a different finish, and the filling system of the pen is also different from the one I have reviewed before. And I'm talking about the Visconti Homo Sapiens. This is the Maxi model, aka the Oversize, uh, aka the Large. I've seen all kinds of names for that. But what I reviewed was the Steel, or Steel Age, and this is Bronze. Alright, that's the difference. I would show you the Steel Age, but I can't, because I sold mine. Uh, so, <coughs> too bad. Now, let's have a look at this pen. Um, this pen was lent to me by my main man, Marco. Thank you, Marco. It's coming back to you after this. I think this is a very interesting model, and what makes it so interesting is that it's made out of lava. And, um, tough to describe if you have not held one of these, because it does not feel like plastic. It's a very different feel. It's almost a bit rubbery. And uh, that's, so not robbery, but rubbery. And it's very interesting. It's odd to the touch. I really recommend you, if you ever make it to a brick and mortar found pen store, to, to just hold one. It's very odd. Anyway, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll do a writing sample. Let's start at the top of the pen, the finial. Now, I'm trying to make this move a bit. Uh, it looks a lot like one of those Visconti My Pen finials, which you can take off and then put on a little jewel. But I can't really make this move, so I'm not absolutely certain. But I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, it's a magnetic thing, you can pop it off, you can put on gemstones or your initials, uh, star signs, all kinds of stuff you can buy separately. Then you have the clip, modelled after the Ponte Vecchio, with enamel in there, which I think it, it looks quite nice. You can see it's a nice bronze colour. You have these two rings, which are signature things for the, the model. And then you have this centre band, excuse me, <coughs> I have a cold, um, that says Homo Sapiens. And then you have the barrel, and it ends in a turning knob. Come back to that in a second. You undo the cap of this with the bayonet closure that uh, Visconti uses on some of the pens. The nice thing about that closure is that it aligns the facets of the pen. Now, in this pen, it doesn't really matter because it's a round pen. I also have an Opera Elements by Visconti, which has a shape like this, so it is more of a, a squarish uh, pen. Uh, and there, it's very important that the facets of the cap and the body match up because otherwise it looks kind of weird. So it wasn't really necessary to use this system on a round pen, I think, but you know, it, it works. Section, hourglass shaped, and um, this material um, is supposed to absorb moisture. So if you have particularly sweaty hands, uh, then it should all absorb into the pen, your pen will start to smell like sweat. Uh, which is a wonderful uh, detail. Now, here we have the nib. The nib is, of course, Visconti's number six palladium nib. This happens to be a double broad, and it is, I, I don't know if you can really see this, it's slightly overcast here, but it is a two-tone nib. There is a bit of gold coloration in there, as well as chrome-colored stuff. Filling mechanism of the pen. <coughs> and that's what makes this pen quite different from the steel age that I've reviewed before. This is a power filler. And I'm not going to um, open it now because there's ink in there, but I happen to have one right here that's uninked. This is a power filler. Beautiful system. You unscrew the end, you pull the plunger back, you put it in a bottle of ink, you push this back, vacuum is created, and ink is drawn up. It's a fantastic system. I absolutely love it. Giant ink capacity. It works well. Uh, you can let ink out of a secondary chamber, and, and you can fly with it without issue. So really, really cool. Now, what do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? I like the model. I think it looks cool. And I like the bronze a lot more than I liked the steel. The steel looked a bit cold, and I think the, the combination of this very dark... Uh, it's not black, but a very, very dark grey colour with the bronze looks very nice. It's very warm and it's, it's, it's just a cool look. I also, for some reason, really like these two rings 
combined with the clip. It's really odd, but I think this looks cool. I think it's a very nice design, looks very balanced. I don't know, I just like it. The pen is pleasant to hold. It's comfortable for me. It's a beefier pen, but not super thick or anything, just very comfortable. And because the material is quite light, it's really well balanced. I also like that the power filler offers you a very nice, large ink capacity. All of that I like. Now, you can even post it if you want to, then it becomes really big and top heavy, but it is possible and it's a secure post, as you can see. So all of that I like. Final thing I will say is, it's a unique material. I don't know any other pen brand, correct me if I'm wrong, but that uses lava to make pens out of. Now let's look at some things I don't like so much. There are a few. Um, this material is very interesting, but as I said, it absorbs moisture. That means that when you ink it up, this does not take cartridges. You need to use bottled ink. You need to dip it into ink, draw up your ink. The material stains, and that means that you need to wipe it down very quickly after you have inked it up. Is that a big deal? No, but it's something to bear in mind, because it will discolor. Um, it's also, and this is pretty hard to see, but it looks a little pitted, the material. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain the camera will not pick that up, but uh, there is definitely a type of pitting, and that's, I think, part of the material. I had the same with mine, just the way it is, but that may not be for everyone. It looks like it has pores, almost like skin. And, and it's, yeah, something you need to deal with when you own this pen, that that's the way it looks. I don't know why it's such a big deal, but it just strikes me every time. Final thing I will say, and that for me is a big problem, is that even though this is a power filler, there is no ink window. So there is no way of telling how much ink you have left. But I assume, I'm not absolutely certain, but I assume that this power filler works the same way as other power fillers, which means it's a dual reservoir system. <coughs> and what is meant by that is that you have two reservoirs, a big one in the barrel and a smaller one in the section. And you can drain this. So as you are writing, look at, I'm going to unscrew this, look at what happens to this reservoir. As you are writing, it will be drained until it is empty. And once it is empty, your pen will cease to write because this is closed off and you need to unscrew the end and just let in more ink. That's not a problem. For me, it's not an issue. I don't mind. Some people leave the thing unscrewed and it will, they will keep writing. That's not a problem. But the problem is you can't see if this has a secondary reservoir, which I assume it does because I think that's how the power system, the power filler system works. You cannot see how much ink is left in there. And that means at some point it runs dry and you know, you have no idea of how much you can write. So this may be one you have to leave unscrewed. I don't know what this would look like with an ink reservoir. Maybe it would look hideous. That's possible. But I would say that is a bit of an issue. Okay, there you have it. The Homo sapiens bronze age. I think what we need to do next is do writing sample. If you're interested in measurements of the pen, they're on the website. Go to sbrebrown.com, you'll find measurements as well as great, fantastic, beautiful, wonderful pictures in high resolution of the pen and the writing. All right. Marco, thanks for lending the pen. Uh, it's coming back to you, I guess. Maybe I'll forget to return. No, I won't. Uh, let's do a writing sample. Guys, I hope this was useful so far, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with the Visconti. And you see it doesn't start up, and this nib definitely has issues, which is not uncommon in Visconti uh, palladium nibs, unfortunately. Especially the broader ones, I think. Here's a double broad, uh, and the um, ink is S.T. Dupont. That's actually, it doesn't have to be capital. Uh, Royal Blue. Nice ink. Nice pen, too. See another skip? The shame of Visconti Palladium nibs is that when they write well, they are fantastic to use. Phased? 
Okay, apparently today we have a phased dog. Uh, they write fantastically when they write well, but if they don't, they're horrible. Skippy, um, hard starting, etc. Very, very strange. Bit of fast writing then. And it's not the ink, because I've used a couple of inks in this, and the owner also told me that he's had issues with the uh, pen. I'm actually not writing here anymore, but there weren't really any skips. Wetness. Well, once it goes, it flows like crazy. Very nice, very wet, so no issues there. Line variation. People seem to think that the palladium nibs are flex nibs. They are not, at all. Uh, but they are springy, allowing for a nice bit of line variation. As you can see there. Alright, now some reverse writing. Um, they have it, it does work a lot finer than the actual writing is, so that's all very nice. Marco, thanks for lending me this pen. I appreciate it. I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.